In this video I'm going to talk about thermal noise in an RC system, thermal noise in a resistor capacitive system. And what do I mean by noise in this system? Well let's start with the resistor. I've drawn a resistor here and if you were to come in with an ideal voltage probe, something that doesn't add any noise, doesn't draw any current or whatever, and you were to look at the voltage across this resistor, you would see something as a function of time that looks like this. Let me draw it out. So here, this the x-axis is time, and the y-axis is voltage. Well, V, N. What you would see is something like this. It would just be bouncing around over time. And that would be, let's say we measured that at 300 Kelvin at room temperature. This is a temperature dependent phenomenon. And now let's say we come back in later and monitor at 200 degrees C or, or, or Kelvin or 100 degrees Kelvin. What would you see? Well, you would see a same the fluctuation, but it would be less. Just drawing it out here. So that's at 100 Kelvin. Okay, well this is a temperature phenomenon. What kind of things can we note about it. Well, one, it decreased with respect to temperature, and another, if you were to take its average value, it would be, whoop, I have the wrong color, the average value would be zero volts. It's a zero volt mean. Uh, let's take a Fourier transform of this. Uh, if we took the RMS voltage, where RMS voltage means every point in here we square it, um, and then divide by, uh, and take the square root of it, so it's a positive number, what would you get if you took the Fourier transform of that? So now, instead of time, it's going to be frequency, and this is still going to be noise voltage-ish. Well, for the 300 degrees case, it would look like this. It would be flat. All frequency components would be represented equally, meaning that it's white noise. And if we took the 100 degree, 100 degree K, 100 K case, it would be a lower value, something like this. Now what is what is this value? Well, uh, this noise, what is this noise? Often you'll hear it called white noise, but it's the same thing as a Johnson noise, Johnson noise. And the way I'm going to describe it, and the way I'm going to talk about it from now on, is that it's thermal noise. It's noise caused by the uh, uh, element being at something greater than absolute zero. Well, why don't we why do we measure a voltage at all? Why is it not always zero? Uh, shouldn't it be zero at all times? Well, no. The average value is zero, but at any one instant in, instance in time, it's very unlikely to be zero. To understand why this is the case, we would need to go into thermodynamics. Thermo dynamics. And uh, I'm not going to go into the derivation, but the basic idea is that there are electrons sitting in this resistor. There's a metal. There's metal. It's some material. It has free electrons. And as uh, time goes on, there's going to be some diffusion, Brownian motion kind of diffusion of these electrons around in that resistor. And they're diffusing, and then there will be drift, uh, because maybe there's a local pool of electrons, so the electric field is very low there, and so it's going to push some electrons this way. But basically, there's because we're adding, we have thermal energy coming into the system, thermal energy, we're jostling those electrons around, and at any one point in time, a few more may be over here, then over here, or the vice, or the other way around, and that's why you, you see these sorts of fluctuation. What about a capacitor? I'm going to scroll down a, mi a bit here. What about a capacitor sitting in free space? What kind of uh, voltage noise would we register across that? The answer is, how it's normally modeled, is you wouldn't register any noise. It would actually be at zero. You can only have noise, thermal noise, when you have something that can dissipate thermal energy. 
a capacitor is uh, an element that can dissipate no energy. And I, this is an ideal capacitor. There's no parasitic resistance or anything. Uh, a capacitor can dissipate no energy, so there's no thermal noise. The, the, the source of any kind of thermal noise in any system is a resistance. Well, let me draw some... Um, well, let me derive or show some equations relating to the thermal noise and resistor. And I'm going to scroll down to do this so I get a fresh area. Let me draw the resistor again. Okay, there's the resistor. And the noise voltage again is, I'm just showing it that way. If you were to look at that, well, th so there's the resistor here. There's that, that noise voltage, but also there's an associated noise current, I, N, and it's just related by uh, V equals I, R. So voltage noise equals current noise times resistance. Sometimes you'll see, hear people talk about voltage noise and current noise and or current noise. You should know that they're the same phenomena as related through the resistor. They're not independent of each other. What can I say about this voltage noise? So V, N equals I, N times R. And the, I'm just going to write this out. It's equal to the square root of 4 times kT delta F over R times R. This is the noise current, and this is the resistance. So that's that, and that's that. Well, that's a very strange expression if you're not used to seeing it. Uh, and what I'm why why I've written it out this way is that the you, you can you I, I mentioned that these electrons are jostling around in that resistor, uh, so fundamentally, at root, what's going on is electrons are jostling around and electrons moving as a current, and so that's why you derive the noise current first, generally, and to get to the noise voltage, which is what you're mostly going to be compare, c concerned about later on, uh, you multiply it by the resistance. I'm not going to derive this expression, there are a number of ways to derive it, the noise current. I'm just going to keep on going with this expression. Let me multiply this out. You get the voltage noise equals the square root of 4 kT delta F times R. What are these components? Well, 4 is just a constant. This is the Boltzmann constant. Boltzmann. I don't know if it's one or two ends. This is temperature in absolute zero, Kelvin. Delta F is in units of hertz, and that's a confusing unit, delta F, why it's in there, but we'll go into that later. And R is just in units of ohms. And overall, the units of this expression are going to be voltage RMS, RMS voltage. It's a net, it's a, it's a zero mean, but any at any point in time, it, it's probably not going to be zero. I'm going to unpack this expression a little bit, but before I do, let's just do a quick example so you know what I'm talking about. Let's say we have a system where we know Boltzmann constant is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd joules per Kelvin. T, let's say we're at room temperature, so it's 300 K. R, we're going to say it's 1,000 ohms, 1 kilo ohm, and the delta F, oops, delta F equals 1 hertz. We're looking at a 1 hertz uh, uh, bandwidth. And what do we get for our expression Vn in that case? Well, we know it's 4 times 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd times 300 times 1,000 times the 1 hertz bandwidth. And if we work that out, it comes out to be 4.07 nanovolts RMS. What would the noise current be? That would just be Vn divided by R which is 4.07 nanovolts divided by 1,000, which is 4.07 
picoamps. I'm going to stop here and go on to the next video.